Compared to some other areas of constitutional law, the Equal Protection Clause may seem to have more moving parts. For that reason, these videos explain the Kickstarter for Equal Protection a bit at a time, layering additional ideas on top of a basic structure. But please remember, none of these Kickstarters represent a mandatory order of battle that is required by the case law. Instead, think of them as checklists that you can use to organize the concepts in your mind and ensure that you end up asking yourself all the right questions. As with any legal tool, the first question is whether to use it at all. The Equal Protection Clause becomes relevant when the government takes action that treats some people differently than others. We want to be able to identify some kind of classification created by the law, a class of people who are benefited or burdened by the law, and another class of people who aren't. Now, a law that would ban possession of all fireworks wouldn't violate equal protection. It affects everyone equally. Nobody can have fireworks. So if there's a constitutional problem with the law, it won't be an equal protection problem. Assuming there is some kind of inequality, I like to approach the question in three phases. First, identify the inequality and use some precision to ensure we understand what is being distributed unequally and who receives the benefits and the burdens of that unequal distribution. Next, select the proper level of scrutiny. This determines whether the court will take a deferential attitude toward the law or a more skeptical attitude. Finally, we apply the scrutiny. At this point, you may be wondering why we require different levels of scrutiny for different kinds of inequality. Isn't all inequality bad? The short answer to that question is no. Some kinds of inequality are considered invidious and constitutionally unacceptable, but other kinds of inequality are constitutionally acceptable. And in fact, that's sort of inevitable. As examples, let's look at some of the equal protection cases from part one of the book. Here are some cases holding that inequality violated the Equal Protection Clause. Strouder versus West Virginia, where only white people could serve on juries. Skinner versus Oklahoma, where some three-time felons, but not others, would be involuntarily sterilized. And Loving versus Virginia, where only people of one race could marry other people of that race. However, there were other cases where we saw types of inequality that were acceptable. The law in Caroline Products regulated the makers of filled milk differently than the makers of margarine. The law in Railway Express Agency regulated advertisers who owned their own trucks differently from advertisers who used other people's trucks. And in what strikes me as the clearest and most useful example, the law in Williamson v. Lee Optical treated opticians differently than optometrists. The Kickstarter is designed to help explain what separates these cases from each other. The first step is to identify what kind of inequality we are dealing with. Specifically, what is distributed unequally? And who suffers the burdens or enjoys the benefits of that unequal distribution? Now, in item B, we'll decide what legal significance to give to these facts. But the first step is just a careful description of what the inequality is. You can do this in whatever order you wish, but let's begin in this video by asking what is distributed unequally. In Skinner v. Oklahoma, involuntary sterilization was distributed unequally. Under the challenged law, some three-time felons would be sterilized, but not others. We can describe this by saying that involuntary sterilization is being distributed unequally. Alternatively, we could say that the right to procreate is being distributed unequally. In Caroline Products, some goods could be sold across state lines, but other goods could not. And in Williamson v. Lee Optical, some people could only sell lenses for glasses if they had a prescription from another person. Other people could write their own prescriptions and therefore sell their own lenses and not be affected by the law. 
At this point in the Kickstarter, you don't have to try to decide which people are assigned to the lucky group and which people are assigned to the unlucky group. We'll be coming back to that. In this phase, our goal is to figure out what it is that is being distributed unequally. Of these three cases, only Skinner found that the inequality was unconstitutional. And this is because the unequally distributed right, the right to procreate, was considered fundamental. Meanwhile, the right to sell specific products or use a specific business model is not a fundamental right. Now, when we get to item B in the Kickstarter, that distinction will affect the level of scrutiny. But again, for right now, the skill to work on is just identifying what is being distributed unequally. The Equal Protection Clause also cares a great deal about who receives the benefits or burdens of the unequal distribution. Now, as with the last slide, we're not trying to decide the entire case right here. Just focus on who is in the lucky group and who is in the unlucky group. In Strouder versus West Virginia, even if we don't think about what is being distributed unequally, we know that it was distributed on the basis of race. In Caroline Products, we know that the people who sold filled milk were treated differently than the people who sold margarine. And in Williamson, opticians were treated differently than optometrists. It's very helpful at this stage to come up with a nice crisp description of what separates the lucky group from the unlucky group. And this is usually expressed in terms of a phrase that speaks of the basis on which something is distributed unequally. In Strouder, something was distributed unequally on the basis of race. In Caroline Products, something was distributed unequally on the basis of which product is sold. And in Williamson, people were treated differently based on their profession or on their professional training. Now, there's a qualitative difference between these different bases for distributing burdens and benefits unequally. It doesn't seem particularly suspicious or improper to allocate rights differently based on which product is being sold or which profession one is working in. As we know from living our lives, that happens all the time. However, allocating rights on the basis of race is suspicious or suspect. It's a suspect thing for the government to do. The examples we've just worked through explain the vocabulary that we use for these two types of inequality. When looking at what is being distributed unequally, it will matter whether that thing is considered a fundamental right. So this is often known as the fundamental rights problem. When looking at who is affected by the unequal distribution, it will matter whether the classification is suspicious or suspect. That's why this is known as the suspect classifications prong. So that summarizes the first step, identifying the inequality. In our next video, we'll think about what to do with the inequality that we've identified.